welcome to New Community Online. Magnify the Lord with me. Bless his name. Let us exalt his name together, for the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy endures forever. Marvelous are his works. Marvelous are his works. Rejoice and be glad. Let the people of God rejoice. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. We worship you, God. Come on, let's worship together. As we bless your name, receive our praise. Shout your and name. We shout and your name. Receive our praise. Receive our praises. Receive our praises. As we bless As your we name. Bless your name. Receive our praise. 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 As we shout.
you were great in God. Come on and bless his name, bless his name, bless his name, bless his name. Where's your heart right now? Where's your heart right now? Give it to the Lord. Whatever the problem is, give it to him. He's greater. He's bigger. Whatever the problem is, where's your mind right now? Focus on him. Concentrate on those things. Whatsoever things are good report. Believe those things. Come on, believe him. Trust him. Where's your heart right now? God, help us to believe you. Help us to trust you. You are greater than every situation. God, you're bigger than every situation. No matter the problem, no matter the season, God, you are in control. You're an awesome God. You're an awesome God. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Call his name. Call his name right there. Just say, Jesus. Woo. The Bible says that demons tremble at the name of Jesus. Sickness, disease, it has to try up and shrivel up in the name of Jesus. Say it right there, Jesus. Jesus. Woo. Marriages have to be healed in the name of Jesus. Come on and call his name. Say, Jesus. Jesus. We believe you, Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus. There's power in the name of Jesus to break every chain, to break every chain, to break every chain. Hallelujah. So what a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. Name of Jesus Christ, my King. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing compares to this. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. we thank you for your love we thank you for your love we thank you for your favor we thank you for forgiveness we thank you for salvation God we thank you for your blessing we thank you God for keeping us safe God some of us might not be where we want to be but we're not we're sure God not where we used to be we thank you God we thank you for for guiding us for leading us we thank you for your word your word is true your word stands your word is true God so we bless you. There's power in your name, Jesus. What a beautiful name. Oh, oh, oh. Say this. You were the word. You were the word in the beginning. One with God. One with God, the Lord most high. Your hidden glory in creation. Hidden glory and creation. Now reveal. Now revealed in you. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. What a beautiful name it is. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus Christ, my peace. What a beautiful name. What a beautiful name it is. Nothing can pass. want heaven without us. Let's sing that. You didn't want heaven Jesus. The name of Jesus. 
Now join me as we say our statement of dedication. We are the people of God. We are committed to learning how to follow Jesus in every area of our lives. The Holy Bible, the Word of God is essential if we are to be strong, stay strong, and do great exploits for Christ. We are committed to one another, to fellowship together, to love one another, to worship together, to serve one another, and to serve our church. We pray for one another, and we come together to pray. For we know that when the people of God cry out to God, God has promised to do miracles in our lives, our homes, and our cities. Therefore, once again, on this day, we dedicate ourselves to live for Christ. And when we leave this church building today, or when you leave your home today, we go out with a renewed commitment to tell all people in every place 
in every walk of life about the good news and hope found only in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So now we would like you all to join us as we worship the Lord with our giving. Uh, whether you want to take out your app, do it on your phone, whether you want to go to the New Community website, or even if you want to write your check to mail it in, now's the time to do that. As many of you all know, last Sunday was our Faith Tithe Sunday, and on behalf of Pastor Kevin, uh, we just want to say thank you for your generosity and just how you uh, stretched your faith if it was your first time, and also if you're a regular tither, how you stretched your faith just to give a little bit more. Based on your generosity and God's goodness, our faith tithe total was $138,921. So listen, it is all for the glory of God and we thank you for that. Uh, during a time like this with the pandemic, we're able to have the lights on, we're able to uh, be here worshiping the Lord and even with our preparation, preparations that we have coming so that we can come into the building, we just wanna thank you, thank you, thank you for all of that. Hi, I'm Mike Gaston. Elevators made a lasting impression on my walk with Jesus Christ by witnessing to me what Christian fellowship looks like as a young adult, how to fulfill a role as a man of God while waiting and preparing to meet my blessed woman of God helpmate, how to be and how to be an avid reader of Christian literature. For six years, since 2014, I've connected with the Elevate community, the throwback parties, the summer cookouts, the endless books from Eric Mason, Dr. Miles Monroe, Tony Evans, the Bible studies at each other's homes over the summer, and the reality talks about relationships. All have helped me mature into a better man, a stronger brother, and a steadfast pursuer for Jesus Christ. I just wanted to share a quick testimony from the 2019-2020 Elevate season this year. Um, starting off with our life girls. The ladies of my life group, Kingdom Women, you guys were just amazing. They were just amazing. It was just a lot of young women who came and ready to just share and be open and honest and authentic and genuine. And there was just so many times where we just uh, poured out our hearts to one another, not being worried about what other people were going to think or say and just getting to the nitty gritty of what it looks like um, really walking out this Christian walk as young women of God. Like, what does it look like on a day-to-day -day basis when practical stuff really hits our lives? And that's just been really dope doing life with you guys and just um, getting just some real conversation starting and just delving into that. It's about the fellowship that I feel when I go there. I mean, yes, we do get some good teachings, but more than that, I have brother brotherhood there. I have people there who love me. I have people there who I can just talk to. I have people there who are my age, who go through the same things that I go through, and they have insights about issues of life that I never would have thought of. I can honestly say, since I started coming to Elevate in the year 2018, that my spiritual life has grown tremendously. Waymaker, 
Miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. Way maker, way maker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is who you are. You are here. Well, good morning, New Community, and welcome to New Community Services Online. What a privilege it is for me to be in this space with you this morning, sharing as we worship our risen Savior, Jesus Christ, as we lift him high above everything and all things that are happening in this world today. What a privilege and an honor it is to be a believer, to be on this side of eternity, amen, to be on this side of my salvation. I remember some years ago when I wasn't in this place, when I really didn't know Jesus as my Lord and Savior, I really didn't have the peace and the assurance that comes from that connection with our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. But can we give him a shout out? Can we give him a praise today? <laughs> what a privilege it is to be serving Jesus Christ. And of course, you know, I want to give a shout out to my friend, Pastor Kevin James, who is now my pastor. And what a privilege it is to be serving on the team along with him and all of the team that are here at New Community. 
New community, I want you to know that your pastor, your first family, they love you. I have sat in meetings where you are on their mind, that you are a part of their thought. And everything we do here is to assure that you are connecting with Christ in such a way that you will be able to live in victory in this world throughout your time. Amen. So let's give praise to God again. Amen. I want to invite you to join me as we open our Bibles to Luke chapter 18. We want to look together at verses number 35 through to verse number 33, or 43, excuse me, verse 35 through 43, and I'm reading the New International Version. Here's what it says. As Jesus approached Jericho, a blind man was sitting by the roadside begging, and when he heard the crowd going by, he asked, what is happening? And they told him, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And he called out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. And those who led the way rebuked him and told him to be quiet. But he shouted all the more, son of David, have mercy on me. And then Jesus stopped and ordered the man to be brought to him. And when he came near, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? He said, Lord, I want to see. And then Jesus said to him, receive your sight. Your faith has healed you. And immediately he received his sight and followed Jesus, praising God. And when all of the people saw it, they also praise God, as we can do together. Come on, let us give God some praise. I've entitled today's message, Ain't Too Proud to Beg. Ain't Too Proud to Beg. You know that 1966 song by the Temptations? Ain't Too Proud to Beg. We're looking at this guy here. He was in a situation where his life was stuck. And he knew that if he was going to get a deliverance, he had to have a connection. And so today we're going to look at some things in this passage that will help you and I to move on from being stuck to the place that God wants us to be. There are literally a lot of things that have been crowding us in life today. I really believe that. The reality is it's like we're doing life in the bubble. You know, the NBA is playing basketball in the bubble, and it seems like we've been doing life in the bubble. We've been trapped by our frustrations. We've been isolated with a lot of troubles. We've been trying to adapt to this new hybrid type of lifestyle. And then here it is, a lot of repeated acts of social injustice. We see all of this political unrest around us. I mean, the tricks that the government are pulling right now, I can't even say that it's politics. It's definitely politics unusual. You see, I think they're trying to manipulate the vote of the American people in some of the antics that they're pulling, especially the vote of people of color. But along with all of that, this pandemic is still going crazy and it's unleashed Instead of it losing its momentum, it's building its momentum. In some ways, it's overwhelming. It's kind of paralyzing, pressurizing us with a lot of anxiety and distractions. It's just a whole lot of drama going on if you really want to be truthful about it. Some people's dreams have been inhibited. Dreams are on the back burner, on hold. And anxiety is steadily pushing in on us. For me, it's kind of catatonic. I mean, it's almost got me to where I I I'm caught in myself, but thank God for the mercies and the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Today, I want to just talk about this premise, this importance of the purpose of teaching you how to find your voice when it's crowded. You see, with the many things that are happening in our lives, the many things that are crowding in on us today, God wants us to know something, that I hear your cries for help. And so today, as we dive into this passage, we're going to learn some things from this guy here who was sidelined by life. You see, this guy was sidelined, and you see a lot of people was trying to tell him, be quiet, be quiet, don't open your mouth. But I want you to understand something today. You cannot be quiet. And the reason why you cannot be quiet is that the mouth is a powerful instrument. In fact, the tongue is such a unique object that God has given your voice a clarion distinction and sound. In fact, the uniqueness that God has placed in the tongue is that the tongue has the power of life and death. 
It has the ability to heal or to wound. The tongue has the ability to build up or to tear down. The tongue is so powerful that James, by revelation, writes, as small as the tongue is, it's as mighty as a ship's rudder with the ability to navigate your direction in life. So today, as we look at the many things, the power that is behind your voice today, I want to encourage you to move forward. Isn't it no wonder that the enemy is trying so hard to silence your voice? He's trying so hard to deceive you into thinking that what you have to say doesn't matter. It's because he knows that when you begin to speak, that heaven opens up. He knows that when you begin to speak, that God begins to move and something begins to happen in the earth. Come on, let's shout a amen to God. Thank you, Pastor Kevin. He knows that when the people of God cry out to God, that God has promised to do miracles in our lives, in our homes, and in our cities. And so today, we want to talk about the importance of finding your voice in a crowd. Here it is, this guy, he's sidelined by life. Life is sort of passing him by like this crowd was passing him by. But scripture makes note of something, that this guy is blind and he is begging. So what's that suggesting to us? It's suggesting us that this guy is literally living from the leftovers of other people. In fact, his survival is based upon their hand-me-downs. And he, here's what I want you to know. These same people that should be advocating his call are the ones that are becoming his adversary. They're the very same ones that's telling him, be quiet, shut up, don't say anything. But I want you to know something today, that God sent me here to tell you that anything that surrounds you, anything that tries to attempt to conceal your voice or to suppress your presence is not from God. God wants you to know today that you have a right to be heard, that you have a right to stand for your equality, that you have a right to live and you have a right to see your family and your land healed. And so today we're going to look at some important principles from this guy, this guy whose blindness is his pandemic. In fact, begging is the cause for his social injustice. And his condition has become a problem that has named him. Anytime they refer to this guy in scripture, by the way, Mark chapter 10 says that this guy is Bartimaeus, the son of Timaeus. But notice that here in Luke's account and in Matthew's account, chapter 20, they call this guy a blind beggar. You see, his condition has named him. For many of us, we understand that our condition is what we are named by. Some people call people thugs. They call people, you know, crazy. They call people stupid. They call people slow. But I sent you, God sent me here this morning to tell you something, that a move of God is on the way. A move of God is on the way to change your situation, to change your circumstance. I wish somebody would repeat this after me. Just say this. Say help is on the way. Come on, just say it one more time, just like you mean it. Say help is on the way. You see this guy signed line by life, sitting here, his situation is the same every day. He's begging, he's begging, he's crying out for mercy. And the Bible says those who were out in front, those who were leading the way was the ones telling him to be quiet. But this guy realized that if his situation was going to change, that he could not be silent. The more they told him to be quiet, the more he shouted out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. The more they tried to steal his voice, the louder he became. And today you must understand that God has given you voice such a power that if you begin to cry out to him, come on, somebody shout amen, that God has promised that he will move in your circumstances and he will move in your situation. So today, as we dive in this message, there's several principles I want to give you to understand the importance of finding your voice in the crowd. Here it is. Understand point number one, the crowd does not hinder God from hearing your voice. Jesus was known for having anywhere from 12 people to 3,000 or 5,000 people brum rushing him at any moment. In fact, the Bible says when the day of Pentecost had fully come, there was 120 disciples in the upper room waiting on a move of God. And so I, I believe it's a lot like that woman who had the issue of blood. 
where Jesus was walking and the woman came and she snuck up on Jesus and she touched the hem of his garden. And he said, who touched me? And the disciple said, Lord, what are you saying? Who touched you? Uh, it's a lot of people around here. Everybody is touching you. But Jesus said, there's something different about this touch. This touch pulls something out of me. When I come to tell you today, as I know that there are a lot of people crying out to God, but God hears your voice. Your voice has a distinct sound that is unique to who you are. And God hears your cries for help. The crowd does not hinder God from hearing your voice. Why is that? Because your voice separates separates you with everything that was going on, all the people around Jesus. Bartimaeus was able to get Jesus' attention even though it was crowded. You see, here's what God sent me to tell you today. God says that my voice, your voice, and my ears are on the same frequency. Let me say it again. God says your voice and my ears are on the same frequency. Now, bear with me for a moment. You might even need to pray for me because I'm going to try to use technology here. Wait for a moment. Listen to what I'm about to say. Hey, Siri. Did you hear that? Listen. Hey, Siri. Hmm. I don't have an answer for that. Did you hear that? You hear how Siri was in tune to my voice? God wants you to know today that I am in tuned to your voice. When you cry out to me, I hear you. In fact, Proverbs chapter 35 verse 15 says this. God says, my ears are inclined unto the prayers of the righteous. I love this scripture because the word inclined there literally means to cause the head or the body to bend forward, to bow. In other words, what God is saying, when you call out to me, when you begin to pray, when you begin to cry, I lean into you. Many people tell you, you ought to lean into God, but let me give you a remedy today. If you would just cry out to God, God said, I'll lean into you. Come on, somebody out to shout amen right where you are. God says, your voice is so unique that my ears are inclined unto your prayers. The word inclined there means to cause to stop, to become drawn towards. When Bartimaeus began to cry out to Jesus, even though the crowd was surrounding him, even though many people were bum rushing him, Jesus stopped in his tracks. He turned around and he looked and said, bring that man over here to me. When you begin to cry out to God, God stops. I love what scripture says. says when Stephen was being stoned, he looked up and he saw Jesus standing on the right hand of God. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you today is that you get God's attention when you begin to cry. When you begin begin to open your mouth, when you begin to stand up for what God called you to stand up for, God moves on your behalf. You ought to shout amen. Second Chronicles chapter 7, 14 says this, if my people that are called by my name will humble themselves and pray, and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven, I'll forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. It's not time for us to be quiet. It's not time for us to be silenced. It's time for us to cry all the more out and all the louder out to God to have mercy on us. We need a move of God in our land. This coronavirus can't take it over. Hate can't take it over. We must be and stand as the people of God, because the Bible says that God would do great exploits through us if we would cry out to him. Point number three is that your mouth releases your faith. Let me, let me go to point two, excuse me. Point two, the reason why you cannot silence your voice is because your voice makes a difference. When you cry, you cry from a different place. You cry from a place of covenant. Listen to what I'm saying. When you cry, you cry from a place of covenant. Listen to the tone in this guy's voice when he cries. He was blind. He couldn't see what's happening. But he heard the momentum of the crowd. And he asked out, he said, what's going on? They said, Jesus of Nazareth is passing. He said, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. You see, the word, the name Jesus means that you are the promised Messiah. You are the Savior. You are Yoshia. You are the Deliverer. You are Yahshua. You are 
my Savior. And then he says something else, son of David. You see, that's a messianic term. He realized that you are the one who is the son or the seed of David. You are the seed of Abraham. And there is a promise connected to who you are. When we cry, people, and understand this, we don't just cry as any old people. We cry as a covenant people. And God is in covenant with you. God is in covenant with me. That when we begin to cry out to God, God hears us. And God said, I won't turn my back on you. God says that I'll respond to everything you pray to me for. Point three, the mouth releases your faith in God. Why is my mouth so important? Why is my voice so important? Why can't I be silent? Why is it important that I don't be silent? Because your mouth releases your faith in God. Jesus walks up to this guy after hearing him cry and cry and cry. Jesus said, what is it that you want me to do for you, sir? He said, I want to receive my sight. Jesus said, listen, I want you to go. Your faith has healed you. You see, when we begin to cry out to God, we release our faith in God. Listen, not your faith in your faith, not your faith in your ability to pray a certain type of prayer the best way and the right way. It's not in your antics. It's not in your much crying out to God. It's in your faith in God. And what this guy done that nobody else was doing in the crowd is he released his faith in Jesus. It was many times in scripture when somebody would call out to Jesus and Jesus would say, do you believe that I can do this for you. And he said, they would say to him, yes, I believe. You know what he would say? Go in peace. Your faith has made you whole. When you begin to cry out to God, your voice releases your faith in God. You saying to God, God, the government not, may not have the ability to make a change, but you can make a change. Medicine may not be developed enough to make a change, but you can make a change, God. My faith is not in all of these secondary things. My faith is in you, God. See, your voice declares what your eyes cannot see. This guy was blind. He did not have eyesight, but he had insight. Here's what he was saying to Jesus. I can't see you. I don't see who you are, but I know who you are. Listen to what he said. I can't see who you are, Jesus, but I know who you are. I know that you are the promised Messiah. I know that there is healing in your hands. I know that there is healing in your voice. Have mercy on me. You see, your voice declares the abundance of your heart. I want to stop for a moment, and I want to do, deal with a couple of principles. I've been dealing with a lot of practical principles, but I want to deal with some doctrinal principles from this passage. Let's deal here with, for a moment with this doctrine of faith. Many people know that Scripture says that if we ask and don't doubt, we can have whatever we say. And so people are crying out. They're saying things. They're saying things. But you got to understand that your mouth only speaks from the abundance of your heart. The Bible says that Abram in Romans chapter 4 staggered not at the promise of God, but he was strong in faith through unbelief. He believed God. See, the thing that kept Abram going through unbelief that was challenging his faith is not the promise alone. Some translation says he kept his eye on the promise. But the reason why Abram was able to keep his eye on the promise because he realized that the, it was the promise maker behind the promise. Come here, understand something. That you're just crying out and you're just shouting out to God doesn't mean anything if you don't shout out to God in faith. If you don't have the word in your heart, if you don't have a covenant promise from God, first Jane, or 1 John chapter 5, verse number 13 through 15, I believe it is, says, here is the confidence that we have in him, that whatever things we ask according to his will, listen, he hears us. And since we know that he hears us, we know that we have the petition we desire of him. Understand that God, point number four, knows the difference between heart talk faith talk, and mouth talk. God knows the difference between heart talk, faith talk, and mouth talk. The Bible says this. God said that in Isaiah chapter 30, I believe, that Israel was a people that always did err because they would draw close to God with their mouth. They would worship him with their mouth, but God would say, but your heart is far from me. 
See, you cannot cry out to God unless you are able to cry out to God in faith. So what's the importance of faith? Three supporting points I want to give you. First, faith initiates or initiates a move of God. Faith initiates a move of God. Secondly, faith responds to a move of God. And thirdly, faith saves by the grace of God. Look at this guy here, Bartimaeus. We know his name now. This guy is crying out to Jesus. He's crying out to Jesus in faith. Jesus stops in his tracks, tells them to bring the guy to him, and the guy comes to Jesus, and then Jesus said, what do you want from me? He said, I want to receive my sight. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Watch what I'm trying to show you. First of all, in faith, he initiated a move of God. Church, understand this, that when you cry out to God, you initiate a move of God. Secondly, Jesus said, what do you want? I want to receive my sight. Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. Faith then responds to a move of God. You and I, by faith, need to begin to lift up our hands, rejoicing to God that we've been crying out to you, God, and we believe that you're getting ready to move in our lives. We receive the move of God by faith. But more importantly, faith saves by the grace of God. Listen to Bartimaeus. He knew that he had no right to be healed other than a covenant right. He said, you know what? If it's going to count on my merit, I can't do it, so I need your mercy. Jesus, you are the son of David. Will you have mercy on me? Here's what God sent me to tell you today, that he will hear your cries for mercy. Maybe you have not committed your life to God through Jesus Christ right now, but let me get you to understand something. That's a faith move. That's not a work move. Some people think I need to get it right first before I come to you. Some people think, well, let me just stop and clean up and change some things about my life before I cry out to you. But see, when you begin to cry out to God in faith, when you realize that you are stuck right there where you are and you are looking for change in your life and you lift up your voice, you lift your heart up to God and you begin to cry out to him, God. God will save you by faith, for we are saved by grace through faith. Faith is the channel, not your works of righteousness. This is a gift of God. You see, your voice causes things to change. Here's what Jesus was saying to Bartimaeus. It's not what your mouth is saying. It's what your faith is saying. Peter, a follower of Jesus Christ, Jesus was being taken from judgment hall to judgment hall. He was out and he was among some people when Jesus was going to his time of judgment. And some people noticed, and aren't you one of those people that been hanging out to Jesus? And he would say, no, no, no. You guys, some of you know the story when Jesus said, you deny me three times before the cock crows twice. He said, Jesus, I'll never do it. But anyway, he was denying Jesus. But one translation says, here's what one of the girls say. Yeah, you are one of them because I can tell by what you're saying. In other words, what I'm saying is that your mouth will tell on you. When you begin to speak, God knows the difference between heart talk, faith talk, and mouth talk. Here's what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. said, and I quote, our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter, end quote. Let me say it again, quote. Our lives begin to end the day we become silent about things that matter, end quote. You see, this guy understood something. This matters too much to me. You don't understand. I've been making my living by begging. Here you are telling me to be quiet. You're trying to antagonize me, telling me not to vote. You're telling me you're going to send people out to try to police my vote and all of these different things. You don't understand what our people went through for me to have this right to vote. I will not be silent. You cannot stop me. Why? This matters too much. It matters too much. Bartimaeus said, you know what? I'm not too proud to beg. I know you want me to be silent. And they said, the Bible says, the more they told him to be silent, the louder he got. The more they told him to be silent, the more he cried out. You see, he wasn't crying out because he thought it was in his much crying that would get Jesus to answer him. He kept crying out because he said, like Jacob, I'm not going to let you go till you bless me, God. I'm going to keep on crying out till you move on my behalf. Why? Because it matters too much. You see, this guy had sat begging. He realized that if it's going to be a change in my life, 
that you are the only one can change. You're the only one that can fix it. You see, your voice can even cause people to change the way they look at you. In Mark's translation, chapter 10, verse number 49, the same people that were his adversaries that was telling him to be quiet. By the way, the Bible said it was the people that were out in the front. Isn't it a problem that you already have yours and you're trying to stop me from getting mine? The Bible says it was those who were leading the way, those who were out in front, those who possibly was the closest to Jesus that was telling this guy to be quiet. Those who already had their healing, those who already had their food. Come on, somebody say amen. Those whose marriages were okay, those whose families were not in trouble. Come on, somebody say amen. Man, you're the one that's telling me to be quiet, but you don't understand this matters too much. You see, then those same people, when Jesus said, bring him to me, are the very same people that stopped and went to him and said, come on, be encouraged. The master is calling for you. The people that was his adversaries now have become his advocates. Here's what I'm trying to tell you. When you begin to cry out to God, God said, I'll make, I'll make your enemies even become at peace with you when you cry out to me. You see, the people who were once telling them to be quiet are not the one pushing him and telling him to stand up for his right. You see, your voice makes such a distinct sound. It has such a difference that when you open your mouth, things begin to happen and heaven begins to open up and move. You remember Elijah, the Bible says he was a man with such passion just as we are. He was a man just like we are. But when he cried, the heavens opened up. For three and a half years, they, sh they closed up. And then when he cried again, for three and a half years, they opened up. You see, your voice makes a difference. Elijah was an example to you. Bartimaeus is an example to you that when you begin to cry out to God, when you begin to open your voice up, God begins to move in your behalf. See, Jesus was the son of David. He also understood that you are the one that is the seed of Abraham. The blessings are behind you. Point five, Bartimaeus cries for mercy, demonstrates prayer. Bartimaeus cries for mercy, demonstrate prayer. Three ways. First of all, the power of prayer, the power of faith in prayer, and the power of persistence in prayer. First of all, the power of prayer. We talked a lot about your prayers. Your voice has power. Prayer is a powerful thing. Shameless plug. But I want to invite you to join Minister Neverson on Fridays at 12 o'clock for the prayer call that happens here in new, new Community. I've said in that prayer call several times now, and you ought to hear the momentum of the people, the community here that is crying out to God on Fridays. Fridays at 12 o'clock. Look on your screen. Hopefully they'll put that prayer line. The prayer line number is there. will be there for you. Call on Fridays at 12 o'clock. you got to dial in, and I'm telling you, there's a momentum of prayer that is happening here in New Community. There is a move of God that's about to emerge from the people of God here in this place because there is power in prayer. But secondly, there is power in faith in prayer. We are a people of faith. One of our 10 core values here at New Community is that we have bold faith. We will not humiliate God or insult God by believing for small things. We are believing God for, uh, for gigantic things, for huge things, for powerful things, for miracles to take place. And finally, we want you to understand the power of persistence in prayer. See, the reason why I called out to Siri twice on my phone, because the first time you just heard a beep, but the second time you heard a voice. In other words, she responded to my persistence. It was not that she didn't hear me the first time. And God wants you to know that because I didn't move the first time didn't mean that I didn't hear you, that it's, it's just not time yet. So God doesn't want us to become weary in prayer. If you go back to verse number one here in Luke chapter 18, you see that Jesus was showing the importance of persistence in prayer. And finally, you got to understand, here's what I believe Bartimaeus knew that Jesus was man enough to feel his pain, but he was God enough to heal his pain. You see, the reason why we cry out to, to God in the name of Jesus, because the Bible says we have not such a high priest who can't be touched by the feelings of our infirmities. He was tempted in all points like as we are, but yet he did not sin. So the Bible says we can come to the throne of grace with boldness in our time of trouble and get the mercy and help that we need. Bartimaeus understood that Jesus was man enough to feel his pain, but he was God enough to heal his pain. 
Here's my application for today. Here is what I came to tell you. Let your opposition push you, not suppress you. When someone seeks to silence your voice, cry louder. Dr. Martin Luther King said, and again, I quote, in the end, we will remember not the words of our enemies, but the silence of our friends. Dr. King also said, the measure of a man is not where he stands in the moments of comfort and in the moments of convenience, but where he stands in the times of challenges and controversy. You see, you got to understand about Bartimaeus, it wasn't that he was unusual, controversy was not unusual to him. People telling him to be quiet was not unusual to him. He had made his life of a begging, and he realized that just because you're trying to keep me silent, I will not be silent. Don't you know what I've been through in my life? This means too much for me. In other words, here's what it means. It will come a time in everyone's life when you will either step up to your moment or run from your moment. Now is the time for you to either speak up and speak out and be heard. Now is not the time for us to shrink back. Now is not the time for us to miss our moment. Now is not the time for us to do something that is unprecedented. We are in unprecedented times, and unprecedented times call for unprecedented moments. We must live and face this challenge. We must cry out at this moment to God, because as we begin to cry out to God, our voice will make room, and God will begin to move. In the end, this guy was just saying, I ain't too proud to beg. Lord, I know that I need you. And maybe you're here today. Maybe, maybe, maybe life has been passing you by. Maybe you've been sidelined. Maybe you've got a condition. Maybe you've got a circumstance that has named your life. And you need a move of God. I want to suggest to you, I want to tell you today that a move of God is happening right now. The reason why you are tuned in to this message is because God has been listening to your cries. He's been hearing you cry out to mercy. Mercy, Lord, mercy. Cry out, mercy, mercy, Lord. And God's saying, you know what? Deliverance has come to your house. Right following this, we see that Jesus is still moving to Jericho, Jerusalem. This guy, Zacchaeus, is there. And Jesus, and through everything, says to Zacchaeus, today salvation has come to your house. Here's what God sent me to tell somebody today. Salvation has come to your house. A move of God is knocking on your door right now. And all you got to do, all you got to do is just open up and let God in. Invite him in. Will you join me as I pray at this moment? If you have not committed your life to God through Jesus Christ, will you do that? It's as simple as this, just inviting him in. Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I make you my Lord and my Savior. Now I will tell you that's the basis for salvation. For Jesus, the word says, anybody that calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But the next step is discipleship. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you is that you need to connect somewhere in a community where you can mature and grow in the things of the Lord. We wanna invite you, first of all, if you don't have a church home, you can still connect here at New Community. Even though we're doing services in church primarily online, there is still a way for you to connect to this move of God that is happening. It'll be displayed on the screen for how you can do that. We want to encourage you and we want to bless you to find your voice in the crowd. God bless you and amen. As you all know, at New Community, we pray for one another and we come together to pray. So now if you are in need of prayer, if someone you love is in need of prayer, or maybe you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior uh, and just want someone to pray with you and let someone know about this new journey you're about to take, we have a new way of doing things where we just want you to text call me to the number on the screen and someone from our prayer team will reach out to you. 
And October is a special month. October is a special month because it's Pastor's Appreciation Month. And um, our pastor is very unique and uh, just really genuine in that he doesn't want um, a, a new car. Um, but what he really wants from you all is to hear how this ministry has impacted your life, how Jesus Christ has impacted your life through New Community. So what you can do is go to newcommunitybible.org and there's this place on there where you can go and submit responses. Maybe it's another leader in the church that has impacted your life. Um, we, he just wants to hear from you. He's truly blessed by hearing how God is transforming lives through the power of Jesus Christ here at New Community. So now join us as we worship. Hallelujah to the Lamb, the one who dwells in the midst of our praise. He inhabits our praise. Some great and some small. You being God, deliver me from them all. Hallelujah. Still can't believe. No, Lord. An incredible.
Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Shout hallelujah.